A new analysis of the federal health care exchange showing more than half of the counties in 34 states using the exchange lack affordable health care plans. That's according to the government's own definition of affordable. Hello and welcome everyone to The Kelly File. I'm Shannon Bream in for Megan Kelly. That analysis done by USA Today shows the county's lacking even an affordable bronze plan for 40-year-old couples making a little bit too much to qualify for financial assistance. And if you're a 50-year-old who doesn't qualify for a subsidy, more than a third of the counties don't offer an affordable individual plan in any of the four tiers of plans. Bronze, silver, gold, and certainly not platinum. The prices of the health care plans on the exchange is shock to many, especially since the new total of canceled health insurance plans is reportedly now at well over six million people across the country. And several new Obamacare fees and taxes are expected to hit Americans in the coming new year as well. Let's talk about it with Chris Starwalt, the one and only our Fox News digital politics editor and host of Power Play on FoxNews.com Live. Good to see you tonight. Merry Christmas, Shannon Bray. And you as well. Um, and maybe not such a happy new year for some folks as we find out more about these prices. It's called the Affordable Care Act. But this analysis raising a lot of questions. Well, it's, it depends on how you define and for whom you define Affordable Care Act. It's uh, affordable uh, for those individuals who had no insurance before, for the target audience for this uh, law, those individuals who had no insurance and they make just a little bit over or 200 percent over the poverty line, let's say, uh, there are some good deals to be had out there. And those are the plans that the White House and the administration love to talk about. What they don't talk about and this is the problem with the law, and this is why Democrats are in such dire condition right now with the electorate, is that for people who already had insurance, this is shaping up to be a disaster. And we're seeing it in this first wave, those canceled plans that you talk about. When the folks go in, they finally have been able to get through the unintentional firewall that the government called healthcare.gov, and they get into the other side, and they find out that what's available isn't affordable for them. Well, in addition to that, we are learning about more fees and taxes, yeah. those kinds of things that you know, there were those who said you got to pass this thing to find out what's in it and uh, get away from the fog of controversy. You and I and many others out there are really four years into covering this thing as it came together, as it was oh. passed, as it's rolling out. There are things I've, I've, I'm hearing about now, fees and taxes, that I never heard of before, but they're pretty significant. And from what we hear, insurance companies are sort of uh, quietly putting them into the statements. But we have an example from some of the reporting that this looks at uh, an example out of Alabama, and they're spelling out on you know the statement essentially to the person paying the bill what it's going to be. These new fees and taxes will add twenty three dollars and change a month. It's almost two hundred and seventy eight dollars a year, and the monthly premium goes from three hundred twenty two dollars to three hundred forty five dollars. Mm -hmm. And those are just from those fees and taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, you remember what they just did with that budget deal the president signed today? Mm -hmm. uh, they said, well. We're not going to raise taxes. And this was the uh, Paul Ryan, Patty Murray plan that mm -hmm. they put through. But there are fees. Right. We ain't, ain't going to raise your taxes. But when you go to buy an airline ticket, mm -hmm. for example, uh, you will pay more. And what this health law does is in the places where they didn't want to call them tax increases, they called them fees. Now, what's ironic or well, it's not ironic. It's it's a fact of life under Obamacare is that under as a condition of being alive in america today you must carry health insurance that's the law uh... but then once you are compelled to have insurance then those user fees from the federal government go into place so that's a tax right it sounds like sounds it sounds like a tax let's ask the supreme court because oh. <laughs> they have an interesting they have interesting <laughs> they, ways of, yeah, of they, defining the word tax as well yeah. well it is complicated all right so we have the six million plus who have gotten cancellation notices right. um, there were critics of this law who explained a lot of these things at least their predictions about what was going to happen people didn't really get engaged but for all of us when it shows up in our wallets in our mailbox uh... It, it affects whether we can see our doctors whether our children can see the doctors we're comfortable with um, people wake up uh, so with this new uh... change in fees, mm. um, with new prices, with people finding out yeah. there may not be options for them that they can afford. How much do you think that the uh, resentment, because we see the polling against this growing every month, um, when it really uh, becomes real in January 2014, and then we have the employer mandate, that's a whole other segment well, a year what, later. But no, that, but that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. What we're talking about is over the year to come, in 2014, which happens to be a fairly consequential midterm cycle. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, the, over the course of 2014, this has been the outer bandwidth of the shockwave from Obamacare that we're starting to see now. As these people sign up and co come into the process, this is going to start rippling across. Remember, this is the point of the law, to take from those who have insurance to give insurance to those who 
don't. And as that moves through the remaining 80 percent of Americans who get their insurance through their employers, it is going to be disruptive as all get out. And that's going to relate to some pretty substantial changes over at the Capitol. Do you think that in all of their calculations, there was any understanding of just mm. how many people would lose in this? Mm. What the way you described it, it sounds very much like a redistribution, take health insurance away from some people or take costs away from some people, distribute them elsewhere. It's going to cost other people more. Uh, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, but when you are talking about it in theory, when you're at the think tank, when you're chewing the fat, when you're drink, we're talking talking about it over martinis, it sounds perfectly fine. But over the course of implementing it in a year and a half or two years, and you have to face the backlash, uh, that's not so good. And politicians aren't good at dealing with consequences. Uh, you mentioned 2014, uh, a big year. I just want to quickly mention uh, today uh, a poll out from CNN yeah. that now flips uh, what we've seen over the last couple of months, a big shift uh, for congressional Republicans now going ahead of congressional Democrats when we talk about uh, how people are feeling about voting. When people are when people are ready to say at this point that they like Republican control, uh, that is a strong sign. Republicans just have to be about tied in a poll like that to win seats in Congress. For them to actually be ahead, that means that Democrats are in for another shellacking. It's going to be an interesting year. Yeah, I'll say. I'm glad you're along for the analysis, Chris. Yeah. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.